We thank the Majority Leader for his willingness to put my two motions to instruct on the floor next week for a vote. And I want to take a minute uh, to explain to my colleagues and the American people what these amendments are about. As I think uh, most Americans understand, half of the people in our country are living paycheck to paycheck. They cannot afford the high cost of health care. They are often spending more than they can afford for housing. If they are fortunate enough to be able to have gotten a higher education, it is more likely than not that they are struggling with significant student debt. If they are young parents, they are probably finding it hard to locate quality, affordable childcare or pre-K. If they are older Americans, it is likely they are having a hard time paying for the dental care, the hearing aids, the eyeglasses, or the home health care that they desperately need. Meanwhile, Mr. President, as many middle class and working class Americans fall further and further behind, there is another economic reality taking place in our country. We don't talk about it enough, but we should. And that is that the people on top, the very wealthiest people in our country, are doing phenomenally well and, in fact, have never had it so good. Today, in America, we have more income and wealth inequality than ever before. We talk a lot about Russian oligarchy, and that is certainly true, but anybody who thinks that we don't have an oligarchy in this country is surely mistaken. In our country today, we have two people who own more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American population, and the top 1% owns more wealth than the bottom 92%. And unbelievably, during this terrible pandemic, which has cost us almost one million lives, when thousands of essential workers died. They died because they had to go to their jobs, and going to their jobs, they contracted the virus. During that same period of time, the billionaire class became much, much wealthier. In fact, over 700 billionaires in America became nearly $2 trillion richer during the pandemic. In other words, for the people on top, the pandemic has been a very, very good time economically. But it is not just the increased wealth of the very rich that we are seeing. Corporate profits are at an all-time high, and CEOs have seen huge increases in their compensation packages. And a lot of this is happening because of the unprecedented level of corporate greed corporate greed that we are seeing. Let me just give you a few examples, few examples of the corporate greed that is taking place right now. Everybody knows that the price of gas is soaring. Last I saw, it's averaging about $4.25 a gallon. Meanwhile, ExxonMobil, Chevron, BP, and Shell made nearly $30 billion in profit last quarter alone. Price of gas soaring major oil companies making huge, huge profits. Amazon recently raised the price of its prime membership by 16.8 percent. Meanwhile, it increased its profits by 75 percent to a record-breaking $35 billion. In terms of food, everybody knows food prices are going up. The price of beef is up 32 percent. Price of chicken is up 20 percent. Price of pork is up 13 percent. Meanwhile, Tyson Foods, a major producer of chicken, beef, and hot dogs, increased its profits by 140 percent last quarter to $1.1 billion. Price of food soaring, food companies enjoying huge profits. While Americans are finding it harder and harder to pay, for the outrageous cost of prescription drugs, we pay the highest prices in the world for our medicine. Last year, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and AbbVie, three major pharmaceutical companies, 
increase their profits by over 90 percent to $54 billion. People can't afford the price of prescription drugs. Pharmaceutical industry profits are soaring. And all of which kind of takes me to the legislation that is on the floor right now, the so-called competitive, uh, Competitiveness Act. Do we need to increase computer chip production in the United States? Yes, we do. But we need to do it in a way that does not provide massive amounts of corporate welfare to an already enormously profitable industry. In my view, it makes zero sense to provide $53 billion in corporate welfare. That is a blank check. Here it is, microchip industry. No strings attached, no protections for the American taxpayer to the microchip industry. And as part of this legislation, in addition, I don't know how many people know this. Some may think I'm actually kidding when I say this, but this legislation provides $10 billion in bailout to Jeff Bezos, the second wealthiest person in America who's worth over $180 billion so that his company, Blue Origin, can launch a rocket ship to the moon. A word about the microchip industry. We are talking about an industry that has shut down over 780 manufacturing plants in the United States and eliminated 150,000 American jobs over the last 20 years while moving most of its production overseas. Got that? So this is an industry that said, hey, we're making money, but we can make even more money by going to low-wage countries. Let's do that. Let's throw 150,000 American workers out on the street. We're going to go abroad. Now, in terms of this $53 billion ballot, nobody knows exactly who will be receiving that money. My guess is that the bulk of that money will go to five major semiconductor companies, and that is Intel, Texas Instruments, Micron Technology, Global Foundries, and Samsung. These five companies in line for tens of billions of dollars in corporate welfare, Mr. President, made over $75 billion in profit last year. The American people are sick and tired of our government working for wealthy campaign contributors and for the big money interests. I know it is a radical concept to suggest, but maybe just maybe we might want to be working for ordinary working class and middle class Americans. And let me talk a little bit about what our amendments would do. Our amendments are very simple. The First Amendment, obviously, would prevent microchip companies from receiving taxpayer assistance unless they agree to issue warrants or equity stakes to the federal government. If private companies are going to benefit from over $53 billion in taxpayer subsidies, the financial gains made by these companies must be shared with the American people, not just wealthy shareholders. In other words, all this amendment says is that if these companies want taxpayer assistance, we are not going to socialize all of the risks and privatize all of the profits. If these investments turn out to be profitable as a direct result of these federal grants, the taxpayers of this country have a right to get a return on this investment. Mr. President, this is not a radical idea. These uh, exact conditions were imposed on corporations that received taxpayer assistance in the Bipartisan CARES Act, which passed the Senate 96 to 0. Not a radical idea. I believe in industrial policy. 
That means the government works with the private sector. It does not mean that the government simply gives the private sector everything they want with no protection to the taxpayer. So if, as a result of these $53 billion in grants, these companies make money, that's good. That's good. But the taxpayers who helped invest in these new production facilities should be able to enjoy some of those profits as well and get some of that money returned to them. And the Second Amendment is really a very, very simple one. It asks, why in God's name would we be giving $10 billion to a company owned by the second wealthiest person in this country, Jeff Bezos? Now, if Mr. Bezos wants to go to the moon, if he wants to go to Mars, he wants to go to Saturn, that's his business. He has every right in the world to do that. But he does not have a right to ask the taxpayers of this country for $10 billion to help him make his trip to outer space. So this Second Amendment simply eliminates that $10 billion grant that goes to Mr. Bezos. So, Mr. President, with that, I look forward to uh, winning the support for these two important amendments, which I think are strongly supported by the American people. And with that, I would yield the floor.